Yeah, we made it right before the sun gets here. Check the oil. Give her a shot of grease. Let's well, rock and roll. We're running PT-175. That's a 2013 model. That one's ours. This is a 2020 PT-300. Big thanks to the folks down at Global Machinery. Dropped this off for us for the week. It has, I believe it's a 7.1 liter cat compound turbo. There's all kinds of room for activities. It's a deaf machine they have to be because of the horsepower. It is PT300, so just shy of 300 horsepower. I forget what this new one is. But she's got tons of room to work on her. It's about a 35,000 pound machine. The carrier itself is like 27 plus a head. It's a big freaking head. I'll show you when we get going with it. But it's got oscillating undercarriage so that this can kind of work with the contour of the ground. And then down here on the loader arms, you can see it's egg shaped so that the head can float with the ground and run on the skids. So if you're going over uneven surfaces, the head can kind of match it. But you really know the weight of the head. Say you drive over a stump with one skid and the head drops down. Uh, you really feel the weight of this thing. But as far as dedicated machines go, this thing is an absolute freaking beast. And it's got a price tag of near half a million bucks. I would say it's probably, probably worth that considering a new one of those is 300 and some thousand. This one's probably actually a little bit more than half. That was what it was a couple years ago, but you know, with everything going on right now. This thing is just, uh, uh, it's every bit of two 175s, maybe two and a half. I consider the 12 versus the 175 to be, you know, less than half. And the jump to this from the 175 is about the 175 versus the 12, if you follow what I'm saying. Get these panels hooked up, get it warming up, and we got some mulching to do. So quiet. You can't even hear the engine in the cab. You can't feel the vibration. So smooth. Cadillac of machines. You can't beat FE and Prime Tech, that's for sure. Alright, first things first. Get her fired up. You have to put your seatbelt on. Turn the hydraulics on. Then everything works. When you want to turn the head on, hit this button, twist this knob, spins the head on. When you turn it off, the head dies. Stops spinning, doesn't free spin. Makes it pretty nice. So you have to wait for it when you're getting out because it's spinning. Your left joysticks are typical, but this is where Prime Tech's cool. Other companies have something similar. But this is a roller rocker switch. I hold it forward, makes the machine go faster. Full stick, I can roll it back, and it takes the machine to a crawl. That way you can just full stick. It's like a cruise control. On the right side, I can open and close my hood to control where the debris flies to. And the new ones have hydraulic push bar. So I could push on a tree with that. Also I could tilt, but that makes it nice because I can go all the way down to the ground and I can drag stuff back out of the bushes. So if I finish off my section, I got some stuff hung up, I can grab trees and stuff and bring it back with me. Let's get down here and let's mulch them. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's an awesome episode today. We have a Primetech PT300 on site. We started this job off with the Primetech 175 and the TL12 with the FA mulcher head on it. I was running the skid steer up top on the nice even flat ground. I knocked out about 5-6 acres of the easy stuff. Came down to kind of tiptoe around on these steep slopes and seen we might need a bigger machine. Summer is coming in close to us and we're running out of time to really get this mulching done before we lose all the moisture in the ground so i made a call to global machinery in sacramento and they brought out this pt300 for us to rock and roll um, the very next day after i made the phone call i'm going to tell you right now that this machine 
has to be the best mulcher that I've ever ran. Smooth, awesome controls, delivers a professional, professional grade finish on the first set of back drag. I mean, this thing is just awesome. It's running carbides, but this job is 60 acre lot. About 50 of it is completely overgrown with this manzanita brush. You can see it's probably about 15 to 18 feet tall. This PT300 sits at about mm, 10. So we got some serious underbrush to take care of. Now this is a government subsidy job, meaning the government steps in and encourages landowners to do a little fire prevention and property maintenance. So they'll help foot the bill because having one of these machines knock out 50, 60 acres is not necessarily cheap. I'm going to show you guys the production value of this bigger machine. Take you through the paces with it. And this new Prime Tech has just got it going on. But enjoy the video, guys. I gotta be flat out honest with you guys. This machine completely took me by surprise. Yes, I know it's a, a bigger machine, dedicated horsepower to mulching. We've ran the entry level, so to speak, mulchers for the last couple years. I did get to test one of these things at a demo a while back, but after having a couple of days to really get to know this machine and start to feel comfortable so I can kind of drive it around like a skid steer and zip around, I'll tell you what, this thing has really, really impressed me. Uh, only thing that I could see on this particular machine that I see room for improvement is the push bar on it. Uh, they do have it designed so that you can push it all the way to the ground and drag brush backwards. That is awesome, but it, it needs just a little bit more. I know the new 175s have fixed that and they can back drag uh, the brush with that push bar 
very, very well. It digs in the ground six, eight inches, something like that. But first and foremost, a couple things I noticed about this machine that really stood out is inside the cab is completely quiet. Most of the time, I just have, you know, Netflix playing, listening to, you know, TV shows, talk shows, something just to pass the time because you're sitting in here for hours on end and just, man, it, it's crazy how fast I was just moving through this property with this machine. Buzzing it out with the 300 and the 175 I was going through and tidying up the loose ends. This machine... Like I said, it run about eight hours a day. The hydraulic temp, I said, it looked about 120 degrees, which is phenomenal for hydraulic temp. Uh, most machines seem to run about 160, 170. It gets a little hot, but this thing, it just, it's got an awesome cooling pack. The engine temp seems about 200 all day, right on thermostat. Didn't even waver. It was starting to get into a little bit of dust towards the end of this job before we had to call her quits. So the temperature was definitely getting up outside. So this machine did not care and when you're looking for a machine the inside cab comfort the oscillating undercarriage going down steep slopes and stuff this thing's very well planted with that sweet undercarriage going under uneven going over um, going over uneven grounds I say that right it absorbs to an extent the une unevenness so that it doesn't feel like a terrible ride and uh, balance front to back very, very well. So you can go on, a lot of this job was on 60% plus slopes. Going front, back, no problem. You go side hill, if anybody's ran steel track machine, you know side hill. It'll hold up until it doesn't hold, then it just slides. It's not, I never felt like it was going to tip over at one point in time at all. But I'll tell you what, boys. They really got something going with this. Just shy of 300 horsepower. It is a big machine. But boy, it just delivers the power. 98 gallons a minute to the mulcher head, 5,100 PSI. To make it simple, skid steers run about 40 gallons per minute and like 3,300 PSI. Having a dedicated unit built and designed from the ground up like this rig is, you can't even compare a skid steer. If you ran this and a skid steer the same day, you'd just be like, oh, I'm just going to mulch the skid steer with this 300 because it, it doesn't even stand a chance. <laughs> yep, there's that damn mine right there. Yep. So I think the entrance to the mine's right there over this. I don't know, maybe this is the vent. So there's the 300 right there. I could come down right up to it. Yeah, because this is a trail that we walked up. The owner dropped us off down at the bottom and we hiked up in here. First day. This is some steep ground over here. A lot of oak. Yeah, because they got these ribbons all over the place on this job. Color don't really make much sense. One spot they'll be blue and I seen pink. And I think it just had whatever the hell color they had. I'm gonna tidy this up real quick. There's a bird trying to get the 300. Out of here, bird. So looking down in, it's a little, a little spooky. It's big enough it'd eat the 300. <laughs>
back to a machine that doesn't have that brake on it. Alrighty, I'm gonna give a little overview on how this thing performed. I ran it for five days, and uh, there's a couple days there that we didn't get full days. But I uh, didn't quite average seven hours a day, which I think typically speaking, if you uh, were buying one of these, you'd have to run it like 10 hours a day to keep up with just how much this sucker costs. But the undercarriage, oscillating undercarriage is pretty dang sweet. The uh, tilting head, super super awesome i don't really like to say super super really really good but dang that contours to the ground really well having the hydraulic push bar is all right yeah no big deal you could live without one of those the head does tilt but using this as a rake to back drag stuff game changer It'd be nice if it was a little bit faster but other than that worked slick I'm gonna go ahead and open up all the compartments. It does have a reversible fan, which everything in the industry of this caliber pretty much does. The only stuff that got stuck in this was uh, right in the center of the fan where it, when it blows backwards, it, it's dead zone. But you open up these little tabs and we can take the screen out. Well, look at this, we get the keys down. Look at that. It's got a little screen on it so all that crap can't get even close to the engine. Pretty sweet. But I'm going to go ahead and open the panels and show you guys the inside after 35, 34 hours. 30, I think it's 35. I don't know. Anyway, right in there. And I'll pop the cab so you can see inside. I haven't tilted the cab yet. I honestly don't think there's anything underneath the cab. But you pop two bolts. You got this goofy wrench, the one that does these. Pop those. Lift her up. Get her out of the way and see what's going on in there. Got a little dust in her. Check us out back here by the fan. There ain't nothing back here. Look how clean that is. Got a little dust right here on the sides. It's crazy how well a dedicated machine. I've been driving this thing like a skid steer. Trying not to abuse it, but you know, getting into the brush and everything. You saw how much stuff was on top of it. Blow all of it off. I'm going to uh, blow out the inside of it. And then I'll hit it with uh, some water once it cools off a little bit. Give her a nice clean, clean, clean. You know, just a couple spots. Honestly, I probably, uh, eh, maybe I'll clean inside of there with the water hose. Maybe not. It's actually very clean. These are things to consider, though, with machines. A lot of dedicated units stay pretty clean. But the Prime Techs do really well. Looks like we got a couple little areas here and there that might have had 
drops of oil at one point. A lot of room. A lot of room. Here's a couple clips that dad took with his phone to show the landowner some progress up top. I did this little area with the skid steer. It banks down along the driveway and there's some on the right. This little picnic area. I just groomed it up. Doing this kind of stuff with a skiddy is sweet because it's fast moving, light material, and it makes quick work out of it. I'll get the drone thrown up here in the air and show you guys uh, the decent little area that we covered. We worked two days with the 175 and the TL12, and then we worked five running the 175 and 300. So you guys will get a little bit better of an understanding of what we accomplished in basically five days running the two prime techs. And I will tell you what, boys, that is one freaking awesome setup. The 175 paired with a 300. 300 does the grunt work, all the big stuff, and that 175 is no slouch on its own. It's a pretty dang good machine, but it came through and cleaned up every loose end around all the trees, and we made quick work out of this project. We're not quite done. Uh, the weather caught up to us because it's a little too dusty to be doing this kind of stuff. You're trying to fight fires ahead of time, not start fires, so you get a lot of dry material on your machines, a lot of dust. We just felt it was easier to shut down. So by having that 300 brought in, sped up what we needed to get done before summer hit and we ran out of time and we took a big chunk out of this property. You see that whole left side, We all that was all us. And then over on the right side, that was more thinning kind of an area, but that was heavily, heavily thick with just pine trees after pine trees and the uh, 300 just chomped those up. I was trying about three to four pine trees because the contract calls for 10 inch and less on the trees to be mulched. And with the 300, I'd get three to four in there, mow them down and grind them all up at the same time. And that's all carbide. I switched over with dad and let him run the 300. I ran the 175. Just doing one with the 175 and a set of knives in the center, it seemed like something I didn't even want to mess with grinding up one pine tree versus the four. It's a different level of how well that 300 just gets stuff done. You can see what we got done in one day. If you had to run down this hill and run back, uh, you would have to be Superman. If you wanted, you you couldn't even do it in less than 15 minutes. It's a uh, it's a pretty long run down to the bottom of this little hill. Apparently I'm getting all lost with the drone. I'm just going to let this run so you guys can see some of the stuff. I think I'm just trying to find where the railroad tracks are. There's the driveway coming in, circles. It's kind of easy to get lost on this property because you think you're in one spot and you just cover so much ground mulching with that 300 leading the way that you, you get into a different area and you know where you're at, but where the road's at, you kind of lose base of it. So I can't fly the drone over to the right because of some politics crap. There's an airport or something over there. So the DJI shuts down. So it's going to act up here in a second, but uh, yeah. All right. Thanks guys for watching my video. That was probably one of the funner jobs that we've had in the last couple of years. I will admit running that bigger machine, I was, you know, pretty hesitant at first, but once I started getting the hang of it, I was really starting to enjoy myself, so big thank you to Global Machinery and Jim for helping us out, getting that machine out there so we can knock this project out, because, you know, you get into a big project, it's fun, but you don't want to, you know, draw it out for longer than you really need to be, and having a machine like that, if we could back up jobs that required something like that, we would clear a lot of property and man that the prime tech series fae products i've always really thought very highly of them but it seems like every new generation of their dedicated machines even their mulcher heads are coming out with innovations to pick up the pace a little bit go to the next level i think that's really what you got to do as a company to obviously grow and progress but Man, they come up with some sweet stuff. And I'll tell you, that the controls on that whole machine, just smooth. Just smooth. But check out Global Machinery Sacramento. They got one in Denver and they got one in Idaho. If you guys are looking for quality customer service, they take care of me. So um, if you stop in and see them, make sure you, you know, say V-Belt and Son. 
but I highly recommend the PT300. They do have the new 175 out that has the oscillating undercarriage, the sonic head. Um, it's basically a miniature version of this that you could still tow behind your 3500 pickup. This machine weighs mid-30s, 35,000 pounds, I think they said. And uh, maybe maybe a little bit less. The new 175 weighs 25,000 pounds. So hopefully stuff shakes out really good for us in the future. And I wouldn't mind trying that 175. But the 300, I haven't driven something that awesome before. And I look forward to the next job when we get to run one of those again. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out vbeltonsun.com. Get yourself a nice hat. See you on the next one later.